call the meeting to order then. We have the roll taken, please. Just, uh, one of you two ladies usually does that. There we go. We want to do it first. I guess I don't say honestly. I don't know all the board members. We're done. Here. Ms. Kaminsky. Uh, Ms. Goodman. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Here. Mr. Gentilly. Here. Lasky. Oh, no. Ms. Lasky. Right here, I believe. There she is. Hi. Hi, apologies. No, you're fine. We're just so we're doing roll time. call. So. No, just Ms. Lasky. Yeah, that's right. Here. Okay. Present. Mr. <laughs> Egan. Me, right here. Perfect. Did I get that right? He, yeah, you did. Egan. <laughs> Perfect. First All name right. again? Mike. Michael. Mm -hmm. It says Michael and everything, but it's just Mike. Okay. <laughs> so, Kaminsky and Goodman are the only two not here? Yep, they're both out of mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's not as part of the agenda, but as part of roll call, since we do have new members and new people, why don't we go around the table and say who we are and bio if you want. I'm uh, Barry Peterson, and for the moment anyway, I'm the vice chair I'm on the board for, I don't know, four, four or five years, something like that. I retired as Mike. Uh, Mike Egan. Um, pilot here. I rent one of the planes here uh, at the airport. Uh, learned how to fly here, actually. And um, a retired school teacher from the Benzie County Schools. Retired back in 2016. And um, um, I've been on several boards uh, in the profession over the years. And uh, this, this opportunity came up. And i uh, looking forward to being part of it. Who do you represent? What entity do you, are you representative of? County or Different positions get appointed. Gotta represent the city. I'll I'll answer that. So both um, Ms. Lasky and Mr. Egan um, are at large members. So they're just, just curious. Don't be residents. <laughs> did resign? Uh, he, he, did he did not re up. Yeah. And neither oh, did Jerry. I didn't realize he was up already. I didn't realize he'd been on that. <clears throat> it didn't seem like it, but uh, yeah. so he didn't hurry up and Jerry didn't either. Uh, continuing around. Uh, Kristen Malkowski. I'm the new secretary um, in the administrative office at the county building. Uh, this is my fourth week. Um, so thank you to Susan for today. Um, I've actually been with the county um, for going on four years. I come from the equalization department. so. Um, I'm excited to see what this will bring. Yep. Finance officer for Manistee County for the courthouse. And I am. And you are Susan Zielinski. I said my name. You did. Said this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, I'm Jeff Dons. I got a lot of titles. Uh, <laughs> currently, I'm the chair of the county commission and on the airport authority for uh, I don't know four or five years now. It's one of the ones that I wanted to get on for a while, and the opportunity finally, and the stars lined up, I got on because it's uh, I view it as a tremendous economic engine for our entire area, and we're not living up to our full potential. So I'm struggling along getting to where we where we have the, the biggest impact we possibly can. So did you and I come on at the same time? <clears throat> Could have been, could have been, because I, I thought you were an old pro when I came. No, so, no, right. it, it, it's just board experience, probably. Barry. That's Nothing I guess more. so. All right. Andrew <laughs> Gentilly, uh, work at the resort. I uh, was asked to join the board in uh, January of 2018. Apparently, one of the prior individuals that works at the resort had a plane, so I guess they just assumed everybody did, but <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I do fly twice a month, so I do have that experience. I've been, like I said, I've been in the area since uh, May of 2017, and worked since January 2018. Andrew's being modest. He's the manager, the general manager of the. Okay. He's, a, he's a VIP. 
<laughs> We're all the same there. Uh, so my name's Alyssa Lasky. I uh, grew up in Manistee. Actually, uh, Regan's wife was my band teacher. <laughs> and um, uh, I graduated Manistee High School in 2006. Went to Michigan State. <coughs> spent uh, time since then living downstate. I work in professional services, so consulting for a software company. Um, what we do is we're either remote or at a customer site. So during what I thought was the height of COVID, it clicked. Why in the hell am I still living in Metro Detroit <laughs> <laughs> when I can live uh, back home? Yeah. And uh, so I sold my house in Birmingham, Michigan, and bought a house right down the street from my folks where they grew up, where I grew up. Um, so in my time, uh, I guess over the last 10 or 15 years, a lot of that was spent traveling. Um, in fact, there was a period of time where I would say I traveled full time, traveled all around the world, um, on, uh, been in lots and lots of airports. I've seen the impact that uh, a good airport can have. It's certainly uh, any town or community that has an airport with close access. There's a tremendous opportunity that that offers for the area, so long as it's taken advantage of. Um, so I, I think my experience flying around the world is, is one thing. I, I'm not a pilot. Um, my, my dad is. Who, he also flies out of here, probably runs the same plane. I don't know. We fight over it every night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I think my experience is one thing, but, but I'm, for all intents and purposes, a a young kid that moved back to Manistee and there's nothing I want to see more than the town I've chosen to invest in do well. And I'm kind of here at the long haul. So it behooves me Welcome to in. help invest in, in Manistee doing well. Um, Barry, I'll, I'll jump in next. Um, Barry Lind, um, I know everybody, so I don't really um, need to say too much. Um, airport director, but I do want to explain why I'm not in the room and just down the hall. Um, one of my children tested positive on Friday, so I'm basically supposed to be kind of, you know, isolating um, our, from around other people. Plus, right now, we have two of our four airport um, operations staff that are positive, so we really can't afford anybody else to go down right now. So, I mean, that'll all rectify itself in the next 48 hours when people come back after their isolation period. So we're just kind of working through the, the process of lovely COVID. And I do wanna also add that um, Ms. Kaminsky has joined us while we were doing introductions. Um, so I will let her um, unmite her mute, unmute her mic, yeah. and she can then introduce herself. Yes, hi, I'm Cindy Kaminsky and I'm local. I own a agency. I used to work for the airline though many years ago. I worked for Alliance and then I worked for United and now I have a travel agency that I've owned for 25 years. That's probably about it that I can think of at the moment. Ms. Kaminsky? Yes. Where are you zooming from? I'm sorry, what was that? Where are you zooming from? Oh, I'm from my home office. Is that in Manistee, Manistee City, Manistee yeah. City? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. I just have to have that on record. Oh. Cindy, just so you know, uh, I don't know if you saw the email I followed up with that came out. You are not allowed to vote because you're not in person. Yeah, I just saw that. Okay. Just as long as you're aware. Jeff, I believe our bylaws allow um, people to vote um, remotely. Um, we made that change back when Mark Birdstrom was on the board and he was calling in um, for meetings from down south. Um, I think what our bylaws state is we have to have a quorum present physically, um, but we allow um, people to call in. And I know we had this conversation pre-COVID with George Saylor, and that's where we ended up at that time. Um, 
So I just want to throw that in there because it is a little bit different than the guidance you were suggesting. And quite honestly, I'm not sure what is appropriate given the current um, rules right now. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would, I would wonder if that's uh, allowed or not. Well, to be continued in regard to that, but we'll go with what we've got uh, for the bylaws for now. All right. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on, the first item on the agenda is the election of officers for the coming year. So I will open the floor for nominations for chairman. Everybody speak at once. <laughs> you want the chair? Not particularly, but <laughs> I don't see anybody else jumping. Well, I would take it, but the catch that I've got is uh, like right now, the, today at 1 o'clock, I've got an EDC meeting that I chair. So once in a blue moon, they can conflict. So because of that, that, would, that would be what the I'll, vice I'll, chair would do. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, nominate you for uh, chairmanship. Barry Peters. Second. Other nominations, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing no other nominations, uh, nominations are closed. Do we need a do we need a counted vote here or just days and nays? No, we gotta okay. we gotta do a voice. I thought as much. Hey, Susan, would you please take the vote? Mr. Doss? Yes. Goodman? Minsky? Can I vote or do I have to be quiet? I think they said yes because the bylaws. Oh. Uh, yes. Mr. Peterson? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gentilly? Yes. Ms. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Egan? Yes. Yep. Actually, I'm fine with that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm did yes. I didn't know in big bold letters. Humility award. <laughs> well, now we'll open the floor to nominations for vice chair. I was the vice chair this year, and frankly, it's a very easy job because once the chairman's gone, you don't have any responsibilities. Although the new chairman might change that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's a newcomer, but he's the only pilot in the room, so I would like to nominate Mr. Egan. Second is for Mr. Egan. Any other nominations? <laughs> there being none, shall we have a vote? Yep. Uh, Mr. Dotz? Yes. Ms. Goodman? Ms. Kaminsky? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Gentilly? Yes. Ms. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Egan. Yes. Yeah. Mission is now for treasurer. And Susan actually does all the work for treasurer, so. Actually, Susan really is like technically the treasurer. Martin Barry? Susan is the treasurer. Is the treasurer, so it's yes. not an elected position, and is it appointed? By the board, apparently. Mm -hmm. I'll nominate Susan Zelinsky for uh, cover the <laughs> treasurer. Second it. No other nomination. Vote close them. All right. You can call your doom. Mr. Don. Yes. Miss Goodman. Miss Kaminsky. Yes. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Gentilly. Yes. Miss Lasky. Yes. Mr. Egan. Yes. And we just have to do the secretary. And you can still nominate somebody that's not here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there for y'all, because, you know, we got <clears throat> one that's not here. <laughs> uh, position now is open for secretary. In the past, our uh, secretary from the county has actually done the work involved with that, so with taking minutes. and. We need an actual secretary from here. And then the a recording secretary. Recording secretary so, gotcha. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, okay. So she records it all, puts it down, and then mm -hmm. we have a, an official that, who yeah, reviews it, and reviews it oversees yeah. it, signs mm -hmm. it, and occasionally has to sign documents. And, and that, I, that's something that I've been doing 
And then, as we said, the U.S. Recording Secretary actually does the work. Mm -hmm. I just sign off on it. His experience, and I would not. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second Andrew. that. <laughs> and knowing it's not a very heavily contested position, I close the nomination and take the vote. Uh, Mr. Dunst. Yes. Ms. Goodman. Ms. Kaminsky. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Gentile. Yes. Ms. Lasky. Yes. Mr. Egan. Yes. Thank you everyone for accepting your chosen positions and we'll move into a new year. Number four is approval of the agenda. Uh, the only thing I thought when I saw it was that the meeting dates it. Sounds like new business, not old business, but I don't know if it matters. Now. Not to either way. Make a motion to approve the uh, meeting agenda. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It is approved. Is there anybody on the line for public comment, Barry? There is not. Nope. No public present. We'll move on to number six, approval of the minutes. December meeting. We've all received those via email. Approve the minutes from the December 13th meeting. Support that. Moved and supported. Voice vote. Yeah. Mr. Das? Yes. Ms. Kaminsky? Yes. Ms. Goodman? Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Gentile? Yes. Ms. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Egan? Uh, yes. Minutes are approved. Treasurer's report, item seven. Packet as well. You can do them separately, the accounts payable. Yeah. Accounts payable. One question, is that mm -hmm. the last of the bills for the electrical storm damage? Or are we still expecting more? Barry. Um, there is one item that is still out, um, a windsock, um, but that is the vast majority. And I think there is actually a couple things in there that weren't related to that last incident that the electrician's been fixing as he's been here working on those other things. So. Not all of those 100% are um, related to that incident. We had a, like a subtotal of what the total dollar amount related to the incident was? I do not, nope. It's been one of those things where they just have been trickling in. Majority that's uh, insurance coverage, right? Or nay? Not at all, eh? I've been a few months back in the term not concerned the high okay. be over the deductible. And anything on the accounts payable that's jumping out? Yes, out of curiosity, do we know like ballpark what the the total expenditure were expenditures were. Um, I'm Susan. Do you have an idea on that? I don't. Mm -mm. I don't either. Um, <clears throat> in, given the five thousand listed there, previous things, so it it would be at least five thousand. But certainly less than ten thousand, so somewhere in that range would be my ballpark estimate as to what the total is and will be once the last item comes in. Make a motion to approve the December twenty twenty one accounts payable as presented. Or
Redonce? Yes. Ms. Goodman? Ms. Kaminsky? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Gentile? Yes. Ms. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Egan? Yes. So on the um, expenditure, revenues and expenditures, there was a question on the telephone expense. That is um, probably almost a full year because based off of the credit, if I accrued that credit and then pushed the expense forward, but um, we don't like do 40 or $50 every month, so it, it got reversed out. So you probably won't see a telephone expense come through the actual month, probably till maybe the end of the year. It may be like August is when that credit will run out. You know, someone asked why there was $386 in there last. Do you have any other questions, Susan, that pop up at you? No, and we did have another um, the PFAS, the miscellaneous state reimbursement for the 7410, so that will be a re um, expense that we will get back and some that gets submitted for the court. Other than that, everything else is. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, financial statement of revenue and expense and balance. We can go over the trial balance to accept part of it. <coughs> So oh, um, the auditors, Gary, do you know when the auditors are going to be on site for the airport? Have they contacted you? They have contacted me, but I have not responded with a date yet. So for, I know at the county, they're going to be here the middle of January. So I'm almost wondering if probably the end of January they'll be here. That would so, make sense. Um, yeah. So we'll go through some of that. Barry, we don't want to have this drag out to where we have to file extensions because the airport authority is not following up in a timely manner to where we've got to file extensions. Yep. Please, let's be prompt on this. And I'll reach out to her later today to see when she's going to do it because she's also the main one for the county. So I don't know if she wanted to finish that one up and then maybe start the airport in February, but I, I can contact her today and find out. But um, the one thing to look at with the trial balance is um, we, the, the cash on top, kind of what, um, so the way this works is, since we have some new board members, um, the, ex, the bills are um, turned into the county and then the county pays them. And so that's what this cash line is up here is basically, you know, the county pays that so it hits this cash line. So it is a little bit in the negative. But we do have, like the, like I said, the PFAS that will get reimbursed for that, which will make that positive because there's more than $7,400. There's probably like $15 that's outstanding that we'll get back. And then the second line item, that cash, is the TFC cash account. So it's a certain dollar amount per passenger that comes through the airport, correct, Barry? Correct, yep. So that's what that line is. So when you look and you put the cash together, you can see that they're in the positive. You just kind of put those two together. And then um, the fund balance is what, um, at the end of the year, if there's anything left, think of it as like your savings account, it'll go in there. And then it just states all the revenues that we've received for this fiscal year and then all the expenditures for this fiscal year. So altogether, that bottom line is a positive of 146 for the Susan, if you could explain where that fund balance resides. So it's just a, it's just an equity line. I mean, it, it's there. So like, um, for example, um, this year, so this is what's in there now before we close out the books. And we don't close out the books until the audit is totally done. And then I'll close it out and whatever's left. And I think right now we're showing a positive of um, uh, I have to look at it like sixty thousand dollars basically. So then that would roll into the fund balance, and then next year you would show like a hundred and twenty thousand or a hundred and ten thousand. 
So oh. it's whatever your revenues right. and expenditures are. So but I, yeah. But I guess are those physical dollars actually yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. kept in yep. county accounts? Yes, that's why if you look at the bottom of the why it's 146,000, it's not the 85 because it's adding that fund balance in there to give you your, your bottom line. Right, right. So from an overall county fund standpoint, even though we see that negative 10,000 there, right. really it's a positive about 60,000 um, in county funds. Yeah, for right now, yeah. Right, right. I just, I just again, want to make sure that everyone understands and I understand correctly. Um, yep. Thanks. Yep, that money is there for you to use. Mm -hmm. And then there is um, the Orchard Beach Aviation. It should be open for It's included with, with it. It's the fuel sales that go and then the um, rent that is through. Then that would be it for the financials. Did anybody have any questions on those? And it, you can always reach out to me later. If you have questions or you want me to go through anything with you. I have a lot to take in at once. So. Especially for you two new guys, but anybody else, if you have a question, ask it because I didn't. It took a long time to <laughs> figure out what the heck all the acronyms meant. And uh, sure. so sorry about asking. I've got a motion out to approve the financial statement. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dunn. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Goodman. Ms. Kaminsky. Ms. Kaminsky. Oh, sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Right. Gentilly. Yes. Ms. Lasky? Yes. Mr. Egan? Yes. Perfect. Item 8, committee reports, reports and discussions. To my knowledge, none of those committees have met over the past month, and I assume it's now my responsibility to restock them. That I is don't correct. recall that ever. What I, I would recommend, um, Barry, is that you think about it between now and the next meeting and make those committee that's, appointments. That's where I was going. I was, gonna, I was gonna maybe describe them a little bit and then let people think about it. And if anybody has a particular interest, let me know. So Barry, in a nutshell, the executive committee does what? Um, it, policy or suggest policy, I would say. I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, technically, if um, something comes up and the board can't meet, the executive committee um, can meet to um, discuss um, things. That rarely, if ever, happens. Yeah. Um, we generally call special board meetings um, for stuff like that. Um, but in the past, things like um, bylaw changes and things like that have been delegated to the executive committee um, to bring back to the board for action. Um, okay. I don't recall that the executive committee met in the past year, so it's not a very active committee oh, so. right now. Yeah. Budget committee is uh, pretty self-explanatory. We have, a, have to set a yearly budget. And the timing on that is um, it corresponds with the county budgeting fiscal year. So we are on a fiscal year that starts October 1st, like the county. So the budgeting process usually kicks off March, April for us um, to get a draft put together to get to the county for their timeline, which usually is around June, where they're starting to collect drafts for their cycle, which goes through the summer, and then everything gets approved August, early September for an October 1st start. Okay. And the Capital Projects Committee. So that's probably our most active committee. Um, it looks at um, basically a list of 
locally funded projects that um, the airport is trying to conduct. Um, last, for those, you know, new members, maybe looked at the minutes, there was some discussion last month from that committee about um, putting some um, action into our 10 unit T hanger um, to try to prevent that from deteriorating further. Um, there's a list of probably 10 items that we're tracking in that committee that really go out probably 10 years, um, all dependent on funding. Um, and that's really what that committee is about is setting the priorities, working through the budgeting um, aspects of that, and then occasionally getting involved in um, things like um, contacting potential bidders and things like that, um, depending on how much someone has the skills and or wants to be involved in that. Thank you, Barry. So keep those in mind. If there's one that you have a particular interest in, please let me know. We'll all be appointed next meeting. Are all of these recommending committees, like everything ends up coming back to the board? Okay. Yes. <coughs> Item nine, airport director's report. Um, okay, thank you. There should be copies of my reports on the table there and also up on the screen, hopefully. Um, Barry, is there a way to increase the volume in here a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, on the phone, press the volume up button, and I'll. Yeah. Barry, I'll it, it helps. It helps, Barry, if you're speaking in the direction of the microphone. It's when you turn your head, ah. we uh, start to lose you. Okay. Um, and for some reason, my computer keeps adjusting my microphone down. So. Um, so my report. So no incidents or accidents for the month. Um, that's what I always lead off with. Um, number two here is, since this is the first meeting of the new year, um, this is just a, a, a random fact that I um, pulled together from something that jumped out at me is kind of wrapping up year end stuff around here. And that is our retail fuel sales for the past year. Um, for those that aren't as aviation centric, um, there are two types of aviation fuel. There's 100 low lead, um, which is what is used by small general aviation piston aircraft. And then there's jet A, which is jet fuel that's used by larger aircraft. Retail here means that this is fuel that was sold to general aviation customers. So this takes out the airline it takes out um, the fuel that Orchard Beach Aviation uses to do sightseeing flights and stuff like that. This is really just um, either general aviation aircraft that are visiting our airport or those that are based here, their total fuel sales. So what we see here is kind of um, two different ends of the spectrum. So we have 100, which again is that small, sing, generally a, a small aircraft, single engine piston aircraft that um, is, you know, more for personal use. And our total sales were just under 6,000 gallons for the year. And that is the lowest we've had in sales, you know, in the last decade that may be the lowest going back two decades or more. I didn't go back through my records um, any farther than that. Um, we've been averaging kind of in, I mean, it varies by year, but over the last decade, it's been as high as 7,500 gallons, as low as 6,200 gallons. Um, last year was a 6,200 gallon year, or last year, 2020 was a, 6,200 gallon, 2021 was the 
5,900. Um, so it's about a 5% decrease. Um, it's been as high as 7,500. Um, you know, so there's generally been a trend though that this type of aviation or at least its use of our airport has been declining that ties into the conversations that we have about our hangar space, whether that's desirable for people to base aircraft here, et cetera, et cetera. The other end of the spectrum is uh, our jet fuel sales, um, just over 50,000 gallons, which is a new high um, for our airport. Over the last decade, it's ranged from that 26,000 up to a high of 44,000. Um, so we see, and this isn't necessarily surprising, that we are being used more and more for larger aircraft, jet aircraft operations, um, things that take jet fuel, as opposed to a smaller general aviation and use of people basing their aircraft and kind of, you know, setting up this as their home. So overall, it was a good year from fuel sales, um, but it shows kind of a pattern that um, we're in the midst of. This is not necessarily unique to Manistee. These patterns are industry-wide, um, especially last year. There was a, a lot of demand for um, charter jet traffic um, because many people had um, spare cash to spend and they didn't want to fly commercially. So this became an alternative that many people dipped their toes into for the first time. Um, whereas again, on the small GA, it's generally people you know paying out of their pockets. They're more hobbyists typically and that was that is just not a growing part of the industry. Um, moving on then to um, the second page of my report, and that's my monthly report on um, total passengers for the airline and then the overall airline performance. So for the month of December, we did 601 passengers on the airline, um, 304 outbound, 297 inbound. Um, that's just slightly higher than November. And you can kind of see where that compares to the last few years. And I actually have a, a more on this later in my deck. Um, but since December is the end of the calendar year, you'll also see a total for the year of 9,934. And if you run across the totals here, that is the second best number um, for a total calendar year uh, in these numbers. So it's second best to 2017. And 2017 was our second best previous overall with 2011 Frontier being our top year. So overall, in the midst of a pandemic environment, um, Cape Air actually did very well from a total passengers perspective, bringing us up to, you know, essentially the best year that our previous carrier had done, which was, you know, our second best year overall. Um, so, you know, from those numbers, one would say what Cape Air has works. But then we flip down to the bottom half on the performance side, and you know this is in some ways a, a broken record, but the pattern that we're seeing is now a continuation five months in a row of significant amounts of canceled flights. Um, while December was better than November, um, a 17% cancellation rate is significantly you know, high, too high. Um, and that is a problem. Um, if operationally Cape Air were more in the industry standard, or at least under 10% canceled flights, you know, 5% or less would be ideal. Uh, 
the number of total passengers for the year would have surpassed what um, public charters did, and you know it would have been our second best year ever. Um, but their operational issues are the Achilles heel right now with Cape Air. Does anyone have any questions on that? Then I will move on to my airfare report once I rotate it around. Um, uh, actually, real, real quick, what's yes. the, the Cliff Notes version of why, why cancellations? Like what, what would be a use case? There's not enough folks, they just say none of help. There's, there's, it's Roger, not any one uh, reason. Um, there have, there have been issues with their new aircraft type, the Technum, um, that they started operating here. I mean, they really started operating that as a company. They're the first operator of that type of aircraft really in the world, um, basically a year ago. Um, there have been a lot of growing pains in the operation of that aircraft, creating far more um, mechanical downtime issues than they were anticipating when they started service. Um, but recently, and I think, you know, uh, I'll say the bulk of what we're seeing this last five months is more crew related. Um, I think it was two months ago that Andrew Bonney joined us um, in the meeting to kind of give it an update. And um, one of the things that, for a, I think a variety of reasons, uh, Manistee is getting their most junior crew members. And in many cases, not being able to fill Manistee on a long-term basis with a consistent set of crew members. So their model is, and what we saw last winter, is that crew, crew their, I mean, their pilot contract operate under a, a union agreement with Cape Air. And the rules for that is that every six months, pilots bid for a route. And then basically they, you know, fly that route for a six month period of time. And that's what we saw last winter is we had a consistent set of crews here that bid for um, Manistee, flew it for the winter. We on the airport side and the operations side got familiar with them. They got familiar with us. And, you know, kind of, you know, you build up kind of a, a trust level and understanding as to like on a day like today when it's snowing and, you know, the runway conditions are reported as, you know, whatever they are, um, you understand what we mean by that. And there's not any doubt um, of that or, or, or trepidation of, are they gonna come in here? And, you know, we said the runway was good and their definition of good and our definition of good aren't quite the same. That type of, of thing, you, you build up that trust over time. Um, this year, they haven't been able to get anyone to bid on our route, our route. So we're seeing basically different crew rotating through on a week to week basis. And at times we've not had crew, they've had issues with now I think two or three crew um, members testing positive at various times, which takes them out and then they have it to backfill and that takes often a, a day to get a alternate uh, crew person in here. So there have just been a whole plethora of crew related issues. Um, one of the things that Andrew Bonney, and for those that are new, Andrew Bonney is the VP of planning um, at Cape Air. Um, he's basically the one, he's, he's our contact point. Um, one of the things he said is that um, Manistee has proven to be a difficult place to find housing. Um, again, if a crew person is bidding here for six months, they need a place to stay for six months. And that's been a challenge as well. So a lot of different reasons, but I think over the last five months, while the mechanical issues have been there, they've been there throughout the last year. 
Um, it's really been the crew issues that have been more of a factor, I think, more recently than prior to that. And that is also a industry-wide issue, is there is a pilot shortage across aviation. And um, basically, there is a career path that you know, pilots start at a small regional carrier, like a Cape Air or others, and then they work up to jobs that pay very well for the major airlines. It used to be that that career path took you, you know, a decade to work up. Now with the attrition rates and the kind of hiring fill in after the COVID kind of shrinking of the industry and now it's kind of expanding back, you know, people can walk that chain up in 18 months to two years. So there's a huge sucking of pilots from small carriers up that ladder very quickly. And generally it's almost as the day they get enough hours um, built up that they can make that next step, they're gone or they've got another job offer, which makes it hard for small carriers to basically keep filling that funnel with new people to then bring through the training and building up time process. That was a long answer. I hope it was helpful. I hate to see your long answer for the cliff, for the cliff version. Uh, I've got to go, but I want to want to reemphasize to the authority that there is ARPA funds available. I'm not exactly sure Susan can uh, elaborate if need be, but we have a unique opportunity here with with trying to get the hangers possibly improved. So. Uh, Food for thought, but I've got to go. I've got an EDC meeting I've got to run. So okay, I Jeff, apologize and I'm on my way. Jeff, can I just ask you a question on that? Is there yep. a format and timeline for us to submit something? Uh, I wouldn't Sorry. procrastinate, but in the same aspect, uh, do we have anything official? No, we are starting to talk much deeper level at a board level for the county commission. So, so I should make uh, sure we, that we haven't we haven't decided what to do with any of it as of yet. Right. So I should make sure that Lisa is aware that there are opportunities here. Yes. Okay. Definitely. No question. Thank you. All right. I'm off. Have a good day. Stay safe. <clears throat> Barry, before you get started again, I told Jeff that I was planning on zooming in until he told me I couldn't vote. Um, I also have a one o'clock meeting I have to get back to for a uh, marketing branding meeting with our outside firm. I did want to ask a question though. Um, with all these cancellations, what does our uh, Facebook page or what does the social media feedback look like? What kind of comments are being made? Um, it's actually been remarkably clean. Um, back in November when we really had even more of a, a set of cancellations. Um, as you saw from my numbers there, November was worse than December. There was some negative um, comments there, but I don't recall really anything significant in December. So in general, Cape Air does a good job in reaccommodating people. The way they do that is often rerouting people on either United or American into Traverse City, sometimes Muskegon, even sometimes Grand Rapids, just depending on what people's availability to get a, a ride or something is from those various airports. The, you know, the problem for Cape Air is that comes at a significant cost to them. Um, so from an overall, you know, how are they happy with the performance of the route financially that's going to be a, a significant issue for them. Um, but from a complete passenger um, disappointments perspective, they're generally doing a, a good job, certainly better than our previous carrier who didn't have any of those options of really trying to accommodate or reaccommodate people into other airports or on other flights. 
Last question for me, Barry. If I do leave, are you guys still good from a forum standpoint, or do I have to stay so you guys can maintain the meeting? I believe we are still good because we have um, Ms. Kaminsky on the line. Thank you. And I'm not aware of anything else that requires a vote um, for the rest of the meeting, so. Bye. Nice meeting you. Have a good day. Only maybe the uh, schedule for next year, but that doesn't need a. Okay. Bye. Um, okay, my next report is um, my February airfare report. Um, again, for those that are new, um, each month I put together this report. Um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm looking out about a month from you know this period. And basically looking at our airport and then the three airports that surround us, Grand Rapids, Muskegon, and Traverse City, and really kind of looking at the best fare that you can get to a particular destination. Now, these destinations are historically the top destinations in the country that people from um, this part of the state um, travel to or travel from. Um, these were originally based on um, the top destinations out of Traverse City um, as kind of our proxy for that. Um, things that are bold are um, the particular fares that are the lowest for that um, airport and destination combination. And you'll see for the this report, um, you know, while Manistee has a couple being lowest, um, Chicago, um, and then Dallas. Um, overall, um, we're not as competitive this month on a pure raw airfare standpoint. Um, Traverse City is doing pretty good with one, two, three, four, five, six out of 20 being lowest. Grand Rapids, which usually is the best just because of their volume down there. Um, even Muskegon has a couple um, this month where they're the lowest, which is actually a little bit unusual. Um, United is pricing good out of there for a couple of their West Coast destinations. Um, if you look at the averages across those 20, um, Manistee comes in number three. So Grand Rapids, as is almost always the case, is the cheapest. Um, Traverse City is second cheapest this month. We're third. And Muskegon is most expensive. And again, that's typical for Muskegon. Um, where we sometimes see flipping is Traverse City, Manistee, um, who's cheapest. Um, but actually, if you look at the price range difference on the average, even between us and Grand Rapids, it's $30, us and Traverse City, $15. So we're not talking big differences right now, but on average, we're a little bit more expensive. The bottom part of this report um, tries to factor in some of those other costs that a local person would have in utilizing another airport. Um, you know, the things you've got is your time to drive, you've got mileage and gas, you've got um, potentially parking fees at an airport. This basically adds in a week's worth of parking at the other airports and because our parking is free, um, that kind of gives you, you know, an aspect to show some of the advantages of flying locally. And what you'll see there is that change um, because parking is not inexpensive per day at any of our surrounding airports. Um, in fact, other airports, their primary or their most significant source of income is parking fees which we don't charge parking fees, so we don't have any of that revenue, nor do we um, inconvenience our customers with those fees. Um, but that average then shifts to Manistee being the least expensive when you include a week's worth of parking. And you then see that we are, in the majority of the destinations, um, the cheapest. So that's, you know, it's, this report is, not as good as we sometimes are, um, but it is um, fairly consistent with um, where things have been with Cape Air and their inner lines through United and American um, 
since they've started service. Any questions on that? Okay, let me continue on then. Um, Sheriff Katowski contacted me basically last week um, wanting to set up a meeting to kind of finalize um, our ongoing law enforcement um, support um, dialogue. So I will respond with him and most likely have that wrapped up by next meeting. Um, as I reported last month, Massey Township adopted their new master plan. That's a good step because it acknowledges for the first time in over a decade that the airport exists and has unique needs when it comes to land use and land compatibility around it. Um, there, I'm throwing this up there and um, since Jeff has left and um, since, since almost half the board isn't there, I'm not really gonna spend much time talking about it today. I'll probably talk more next month. Um, right now, while their master plan recognizes the airport, their current zoning does not. And as we worked through this process with them, it is clear to me that they violated um, state zoning law when they updated their zoning in 2008. Um, in that zoning update, they removed the airport protections, which state zoning law says they can't do, but they did. Um, and since that time, basically we've been operating without zoning protections around the airport. The master plan is a part of that because the next zoning update would then incorporate the items that the master plan points to, but that doesn't do anything to protect us today. Now, a couple things that, um, you know, just what does this mean for the airport? Well, one thing it means is, for example, the new senior living center is essentially right under the landing path of our main runway. The zoning protections that should be in place would really prevent that from being having been built there, which is a situation that airports don't want to be in preventing economic development. Um, but at the same time, the airport is an economic development tool and we do have, um, there are aspects about airports and incompatibility with certain types of land uses and residential facilities are one of those incompatibilities because in the vast majority of cases, people don't like living under flight paths for runways. Um, there's a natural incompatibility from a noise, safety, you know, many different um, reasons that those are incompatible. Generally industrial, retail, those are uses um, that are acceptable in um, an airport, um, near an airport. Another issue is um, this fall, as we've been working through some of the results of our FAA airport inspection that identified um, trees that we needed to cut, those trees were actually on airport property. Um, but we're going through with our consultant um, a bigger, you know, longer term airport layout plan task, and that's identifying a lot more trees that either are or will be an issue. And those trees should be covered by local zoning. In fact, prior to 2008, the Manistee Township zoning prevented um, anything taller than 25 feet. Um, 
that no longer is in the zoning. And now it is likely that in the next few years, the airport is gonna need to pay to cut trees on private property that are taller than 25 feet because the zoning wasn't there to protect the airport. So that is turning into an airport cost um, because the township relaxed their zoning against what they should have done. So that's some of the background there. Again, I really wanna have this conversation with the full board, but since we have new people here, I also wanna start bringing people up to speed with some of these issues that um, we will be talking about. Um, Hangar Electrical, this project, the board approved probably last, late last spring. Um, consumers sometime unbeknownst to me recently um, actually came out to the airport and did their piece of the work. And this is the four unit new T hanger. We are consolidating the four consumers meters into one consumers meter. Consumers came out, disconnected the four meters and installed the one new meter, but did it without coordinating with the contractor who's then supposed to wire from that one new meter into the hangers. So we had a tenant this weekend come in and he couldn't open his door because there was no power. He called in a power outage to consumers and consumers came out and said, oh, well, that's because this new meter got installed and nothing's hooked up. Um, I can install another meter. It's like, no, 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 that's, we don't wanna undo what we've done. We're already paying more than we want to be paying for this project. Um, so I'm just, I'm not very happy with consumers right now because they didn't even announce that they were out here. So I didn't even know that this work had been done and it wasn't coordinated with the contractor. It's just kind of turned out to be a mess this weekend, but we were able to work through it, but it was just, I'm not happy with so this. So the guy got his plane out okay? Um, actually, he was trying to get his vehicle out. His plane is currently oh. not in there. So um, moving then on, um, I don't really have much of an update here. So the um, CRISA, which is round two of the COVID recovery grants from the federal government. I don't have any update there, but you know we're getting $13,000 eventually. Um, the round three grant for 32,000, that was dependent on the state legislature approving a piece that did get done. I'm now waiting for the application paperwork to get that process started. Um, already mentioned the ALP update. I was told I was gonna get before the end of the year, a draft from our consultant working on this project. That has not happened yet. Um, I'm expecting it soon. And the PFAS testing Barry, project. Barry. And you got ALP as airport layout plan. Airport right? layout plan, yes. There you go. All right. Um, PFAS testing, that phase two work was completed in mid December. So now it's just a matter of wrapping up the. So what they did here is they drilled more wells, took samples. Those samples have to get tested, um, those results put together, report written. And then we need to get all of the expenses from the contractor together because we need this grant submitted, the reimbursements for this submitted in March so that the grant can be closed out by April because this is a joint MDOT Eagle um, grant program. So it's following more of Eagle's rules than it is MDOT's. Um, Cape Air. A lot of this I've already talked about, so I will, I think I've mentioned everything on this slide, so I'll quickly go to the next one. Um, as I did mention that November was overall good, and this kind of is the top five years. I, uh, that should state December, oops, sorry. Um, December was good for number of passengers. These are the top, five years for total passengers for December. 
So our best December was 2011 with Frontier. We had three good Decembers with um, public charters, also known as North Country Sky. And then this December came in at 601. Clearly in the ballpark, if we didn't have 17% of our flights canceled, we'd probably be surpassing that um, 700 for the month. Um, load factor was 73%. Um, and again, that should say December. Advanced bookings for January and the rest of winter are comparable to last year, trending a little bit higher, but we're not seeing like 50% growth or anything significant at this point. Um, we're seeing, you know, good healthy numbers with Omicron and all of the upheaval right now with COVID. There is definitely a cooling of air travel that is being seen, you know, by us as well as others in, in the industry. Um, right now we're continuing the off season schedule, which is two daily flights and fares are currently running um, a low of $49 up to $99. And basically that is basically by seats on the plane. So the first seat sold will be $49 and then they ratchet up to the last seat sold being $99 on any particular flight. Um, marketing wise, um, we are continuing our joint calls. We meet with Cape Air every two weeks to work through marketing. Our last meeting got canceled, so we haven't had one since the holidays. Um, and that will be next Monday, will be our, our first one for the year. Um, we did jointly, produce a winter solstice airfare sale. Um, and that was uh, well received. Um, similar results to what we had pre pandemic when we were running a very similar sales with our previous carrier. So our, our marketing efforts, you know, can drive um, sales, which is also always good to see. Um, we were supposed to have a marketing plan update last month. Then it was supposed to be this month. Um, I forgot to tell Brandon that the meeting this month was the second Monday instead of the third Monday. So when I called him this morning, he was very surprised that I was talking to him. So we're scheduled now to do that next month, which will be kind of a, a mid-year update. Um, and also I want to kind of with Brandon, he's generally involved in the conversations we as a board have. And, and Brandon, for those that don't know, Brandon Jensen, Right Side Design Group, who is our local marketing firm um, that we contract with to kind of do our marketing efforts. Um, that we next month will probably be the timing where we need to start having the conversation around our next essential air service bid. Um, I haven't heard anything from DOT on the timing of that, but given what they did two years ago, um, March is probably the time frame when they're going to release a, a bid for service because if, well, the new contract with DOT for air service would start October 1st of this year. So that kind of that bidding process takes about six months to go through all of its stages to result in um, a new contract. So we will ha certainly have Cape Air through September. Um, this gives us an opportunity to um, see what other options there might be. And um, you know, we'll be going through that whole bidding process again. That is my report. Any has, questions? Uh, Cape, has Cape Air given you any indication that they're rebidding or not or anything? Um, I haven't directly asked them that question, so I do not know. Um, I certainly hope they do, um, because there aren't a lot of options out there. Yeah. And it's nice to have, you know, more than one option um, to compare and contrast. Um, and again, there are aspects of what they do that work very well for us, you know, the interlines, the code shares, the pricing, um, all of that stuff is exactly the types of things we need, which we 
didn't have with our previous carrier, but they do have issues that also are negative. So yeah. that, that's true of any opportunity we have, there will be pros and cons. Yep. What was the name of the marketing firm you said we use? Uh, right Side Design. And I don't mean to nitpick what you said now, this is the second time the, the report, the marketing plan for fiscal 2022 yep. has been delayed. Why was it delayed the first time? Um, because Brandon, our, uh, you know, consultant on that was sick that the last meeting. So he basically couldn't deliver the report. So are we getting a discount on the fiscal year plan that's being delivered mid-year? I'm only partially um, joking asking the question. We're actually Feels following really the plan. This is really more telling the board what it is we're doing on the marketing front. Okay. No new business was brought forth when we approved the agenda. So unless somebody thought of something, we'll move to old business. And uh, you know of any there, Barry? Nope. And item 12 on the agenda is setting the meeting schedule for the coming year. January and February are the second Mondays, and uh, all the rest of them are the third Monday. <coughs> all at 12, all out here, unless some plague changes that. Um, I think we need a motion to accept to set those meetings. Uh, I move to accept the meetings as they're laid out uh, under item 12. Thank you. I'll second that. I'll second. Oh, go ahead. Moved and seconded. Those approving, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And the or the uh, schedule of meetings is set. Any item is comments by authority members. There's only three of us here. <laughs> I just have one question. Um, sure. Are, do we have availability to the bylaws of the authority? Sure, we do. Uh, Mike, um, talk to me. I will get you copies of whatever you want. Oh, thanks. Yep. No, I've got them. I'm not sure where they are. Well, I'm wondering if they were just online. I'd, I'd be curious as well. Yeah, yeah I was um, looking for those get for earlier. I couldn't, I was trying to navigate through everything. So I uh -huh. think, listen, I probably would like a copy of those. Uh -huh. yep. I imagine there's probably like a charter and, and that as well. Um, Some sort of bylaws. Or... I, there, there's a couple of things that I, I will get you. I honestly didn't know who was appointed until I saw the um, agenda go out. So. I didn't really have a time. Yeah, to, I, didn't uh, <laughs> I didn't have a chance I didn't to, to uh, get you prepped before we <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Alyssa, do you have anything you like to say? I would just like to say welcome to the two of you and our, our new office folks. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I came around and things for a year. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if you guys have questions, you know, feel free to call me or Barry or somebody. And uh, appreciate that. Thank you. And there being no further business before the authority, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for your services and attendance. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.